Good morning, everybody out there. It is nine o'clock on a beautiful Friday. Um, this is Joshua, Backdoor from Bronson Coffee Roasters. Um, I am here with you today in my home in Burien, Washington. And um, we're gonna be talking with Bob again today. We've done something interesting. So you know that um, last week we began a breakdown, um, or we began doing some deeper dives into some of our coffees. One of the coffees we did a deeper dive into was um, our, uh, our kind of flagship roast, one of our flagship roasts, Dancing Goats, um, the namesake of our coffee bars, and often the first coffee lots of that door from Bronson. So what we wanted to do is we got some good response from that. So we wanted to bring Bob in to talk a little bit about um, the coffee itself, a little bit about its components and blending in general, but also the coffee itself, a little bit about its components and blending in general, but also to talk about how it is he works with his team across two different roasteries um, as they work on making sure that the blends stay in that kind of that pocket, that sweet little spot we want them to be so we can recreate that cup profile from week to week, month to month, year to year. So I'm going to bring Bob in now just uh, to say hello. Hey, Bob, how are you doing? Hey, Josh. Good morning. Good to see you. How are things down in Olympia right now? Thanks for uh, having me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, things, are, things are good. It's, uh, it's sunny. Um, spring. The grass is growing faster than, than, than I'd like it to be. So, but that's, you know, somewhat, somewhat therapeutic to go out there and get the push mower going and almost an acre. Do you have a push mower for an acre? Uh, it's, it's, yeah, there's a lot of topography <laughs> that needs to be navigated. So, uh, riding mowers out of the question. Wow. That is, that is brave. Okay. Like I said, it's, it's good exercise. It's a uh, very, very, very therapeutic. Okay. Well, good for you. Well, this will be a nice break then for you to decide for a little bit and drink some coffee with me hey, you and know, back at it. As always, I look forward. I, I look forward to, to talking with you and anyone else that's joining. So, uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, I, my apologies on uh, missing everybody this past Wednesday, but uh, hopefully I can make it up this 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 lovely Friday morning. So, or afternoon, depending on where you're at. So. Yeah, thanks, Bob. So I was just telling folks that um, what we have here today is a kind of a breakdown of a blend. So we've talked a little bit as we've dived deeper into some of our coffee offerings in our catalog about single origins and blends. And we've discussed with uh, the folks watching how uh, blends are a combination of origins or even different roast profiles maybe within an origin that we work on, that you and your team work on to kind of create a consistent experience. So um, I mentioned that to you and then we talked about Dancing Goats as, an as a kind of a prime example of a, of a blend that we work really hard on. Yeah, so obviously we're gonna, we're gonna look, do that deeper dive in the Dancing Goats today. Um, I wanted to you know, talk about what some of the components are. Um, you mentioned uh, consistency and you know, I'm, one of the things we're always talking about and working on is consistency from our Olympia roasting facility to our Atlanta roasting facility. Um, most of the time we have the same green inventory in those locations. However, there are times where, uh, you know, the coffee itself, the green coffee itself might be a little different and, you know, in the spirit of agriculture, um, there could be some, some differences. So we're always trying to just mitigate what those are and, and make sure that we're, we're staying on par with each other. So, yeah, so I have, uh, so one of the things we do is we usually do, uh, what we call our Olympia Atlanta exchange. Um, we take samples of a coffee, um, every other week usually. Um, and we'll, sh you know, pull those ingredients aside on a Monday morning in both locations, uh, set up two sets of those samples. So one will get shipped to Atlanta or one will get shipped to Olympia uh, or vice versa. So 
Each location will then have a set of samples from both roasteries that will set up and cut side by side. Um, and the way we do that with these blends is, you know, like we said, we, we break down the individual components, we taste the individual components on their own, and then we'll go ahead and taste the blend as a whole and just make sure that it's fitting a uh, profile and what our intended purpose is. Um, so, so that being said, um, that's actually what we did today, um, this morning with the roasters. So we'll be doing it again right now for you guys. Um, so a, a question I have. So um, when we're talking about comparative cupping, uh, I remember when I first started at Backdoor from Bronson um, and I, you know, would come into the lab and I would see the team in um, Atlanta with, you know, you'd have your cups laid out, they'd have their cups laid out. Um, that's almost like something that we can learn more about now in this world we're in right here, right? Because you really have folks in yeah. another part of the country through a, you know, a, essentially like a Zoom call, tasting a coffee, yeah. you're tasting a coffee. Yeah, three. How, how is it that you, your teams are able to, like when we're talking with customers and we start talking about flavor notes and whatever, you know, body and mouthfeel, what is it that, and this is a deep topic, so you don't have to go too deep into it, but what is it that you do when you're in two dis different areas attempting to kind of get that benchmark set for what you're experiencing in two different places when we're, we're, you're trying to like make sure that the coffee has a, a unified experience in both those places? Yeah. Um, so I, you know, I mentioned that there could be just some differences in green coffee inventory. Hopefully that's not the case. Um, but you know, technology obviously being what it is, we have had the ability to do this kind of as a, a, a video conference meeting for years, which is what we've been doing. Our primary goal when we're looking at these components is we're looking at that kind of degree of roast and just making sure that we're kind of, fitting in with each other um and then you know obviously we always we, we talk about blends in terms of you, you try and make the blends greater than the sum of the parts um so this is why you know some some percentages you know tweaking percentages just little by little um can have big impacts in the blend you know this is something i'm sure um, maybe not so much with our all year coffees like Dancing Goats and Whirling Dervish, but every year when we're working on the, the new holiday blend recipe for Josh. Right. You know, you can really, people get an idea of just how, okay, well, let's go 5% more of this coffee or 10% more of this coffee or reduce this one. Or, you know, a great example today that we're going to taste is the Sumatra um, that's part of the Dancing Goats blend. And, you know, there was a time where we had a lot more Sumatra in this blend um but the sumatra that we've been buying the past you know while few years five six years whatever it's been um is definitely has the ability to really show itself in in a blend in smaller quantities so we've had to kind of reduce that quantity of that coffee and sort of fill in with some other things in order to maintain that you know little bit of earthiness that you'll get from the sumatra some herbalness but not have it really overpower the blend, even in pretty small percentages. So um, th those are the types of things that we're really paying attention to. So um, my water's ready. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pour these and we can chat while. Yeah. yeah so I, I mentioned uh, Sumatra. So the other coffees we're tasting today are going to be uh, our Nicaraguan um, French roast from this um that's the dark component of the blend um and then we also have uh, a tarazu costa rica shb and we also have a uh, brazilian coffee from one of our newer uh, producing partners that i can talk a little bit about as well um so those those are at least the four components we're gonna we're gonna taste today and uh like i said i'll get some water on them and then we'll keep chatting Sound good? That sounds great. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, folks, you know, you'll see that I'm going to have some coffee, too. I know I don't have the components broken down, but I do have some dancing goats. And so I'm just going to make myself a, 
a nice little clever dripper of this. And I want to remind everyone that um, we're going to be doing a Brew Together event um, on the 30th. Um, and I want everybody to, if you get an opportunity to run over to our, um, our VIP um, page, which is the Batdorf Boosters VIP page. And uh, that's kind of where we're hosting this brew together. We're all going to be using brew method and, and the, um, the Bolivian coffee for a, a brewing event on the 30th. So check that out and look for, look for the event um, on these feeds. We'll, we'll make sure that we're inviting people to come, to come do that with us. It's going to be fun. Again, just attempting to, you know, uh, mimic what you know Bob and and his teams across on both coasts have learned how to do which is share coffees remotely and have an experience around them in this case one that um, that is you know part of the way we do business Bob can you hear me okay yeah how often Absolutely. how often do you do um, uh, kind of I guess I would just call it like a recipe check for 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 the components of dancing goats and for you know how you you talked about making changes with the Sumatra like when how often do you have to be going through this process in order to make sure you're on top of those those issues um well you know in addition to these sorry looking for my spoon here um found it um in addition to the exchange cupping that we're doing we're we're doing our daily production cupping which you know, basically we take a sample of every roast we do every day. And then the following day, the roasters will line them up on the cupping table and, and taste them. And that's usually the place where if there's something changing or if something's not performing the way that we feel like it should be, uh, we'll notice it on the table, at the daily cupping. Um, if there's something that we then believe could be having a, a good example of what I'll call, you know, positive impact that sometimes people uh, perceive as change. Um, that's when we'll address. Well, okay, how how should how should this play out? Do we do we do we adjust the roast to that coffee so that um, it, it tastes a little different or it has less impact in the blend? Do we modify the recipe of the blend, mm -hmm. um, or do we just let it ride and know that you know the recipe's the same? It's an agricultural product. Sometimes there's differences. And, you know, there's times where all those things are appropriate responses. Um, I mentioned, you know, just change in general. So right now it's the time of year. I'm sure you know that we're taking a lot of delivery of new crop coffees. Um, without a doubt, the time of year that I, and once again, I'm not going to say I hear the most complaints, but I feel like customer service gets the most calls in terms of, um, perhaps the coffee tasting different it is usually this time of year when we start rolling into some of those new deliveries of coffee. Right. Um, so one of the things we do to help mitigate that or to make those changes less noticeable is we'll, we'll often take the, the current crop or the, what coffees we've had in-house and we'll, we'll blend them, not, not green, uh, of course, but post-roast. So, for example, a blend had 40% uh, the Costa Rica uh, Tarazu, we we could then go 20% with the current crop and then 20% with the new crop that just arrived, blend those coffees post-roast together to help kind of ease that transition into the new crop coffee. So, um, you know, one week you're drinking Dancing Goats and it's got all this coffee and then the next week it's got all new crop coffee. Yeah, you're, you're going you're gonna to taste, it's going to taste different. So uh, really just trying to make those changes as subtle as possible. Um, that, All right. that seems like um, an amazing uh, science, um, actually. <laughs> what's that? It seems like, it just seems like, uh, uh, it seems like you would just, you never stop trying drinking coffee is what it seems like. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We, we, this, this, this is the business we're in. <laughs> yeah. we, we, we keep drinking coffee on a Constantly. daily, regular basis. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and break, uh, and I'll, I'll kind of keep chatting a little as I go through these. Um, but like I said, I got uh, the Costa Rica Tarazú, uh, Nicaragua Caseras, um, Sumatran coffee from the uh, Lake Toba area, and then uh, the Brazil from the Campos Altos, mm -hmm. from a farm called 
Hazenda Zerinha. Okay, I'll be right back. No worries. So, folks, you'll you'll know that um, as Bob is talking about um, all those components, there are a lot of those names might seem really familiar, of course, right? Because um, m most of those copies are copies that were s that Bob's sourcing because they obviously hit standards and qualities that are necessary for us to be able to stand behind them to the mm -hmm. copies that we carry, and then um, we you know put them into these blends. So as he's as he's noting those out, you'll you'll a lot of those names kind of pop into your head. You've seen that before, right? Hey, Krista's joined us. Hi, Krista. Good to see you. <laughs> oh, I don't think I've seen you. Uh, Krista uh, just popped into the feed. She is our um, Olympia retail manager. She manages all the retail um, stores in Olympia. Good to see you, Krista. How nice. So Bob right now is uh, cracking the crust on those. Hi, Krista. So, um, interestingly enough, Josh, can, can you hear me okay when I'm standing back here? I sure can. Okay. Um, I, I recently read an article about how, um, so, you know, when we're always kind of talking about trends and specialty coffee, um, and obviously for the longest time, you know, the, the, the trend was single origin coffee, single origin you know, whether meaning just from a specific farm or, or producer and everybody's just, you know, people kind of frowns, to be honest with you, a little bit on some blends. Um, and, and I recently read an article how in specialty coffee, there's, there's a, a return to, um, you know, blending. And, and I think it really does kind of get back to that idea where you're trying to, to, to create something that's greater than the sum of its parts. And, uh, you know, we talk a lot about consistency, like you were saying, and, you know, inherently I, I'll say if, if you're pulling espresso, um, you know, let me finish this. I, I probably want to sit down before I say this, just in case I, I get some backlash from people, <laughs> but you know, when you're, pulling a shot of espresso you're, you're pulling a shot of espresso and you really are um and i'm gonna kind of explain this in terms of this exchange cupping you know you get a small sample of, of what's in in the hopper right uh, it's depending on how many grams you decided you're going to use for your espresso uh, your shot um but <clears throat> You know, so naturally, I mean, you just think it's like, well, okay, I'm going to grind this much coffee out of the hopper. You know, if I have a blend with four different coffees in it, um, there's a set percentage of coffee that's going into that blend. But more than likely, you're going to get a higher percentage of a certain coffee, um, you know, each time that you pull a shot from, from a hopper, right? So, you know, in this case, you might have a shot. Uh, that has a little bit more Costa Rica in it. Uh, you do, you know, three shots later, you, you get, you know, the way we blend coffee in the cooling tray, we, we get it as blended as we possibly think we can. Um, but, but, you know, you're going to get more of one coffee than another. And, you know, this is why if somebody gets a shot that just tastes off, we're always like, well, pull another shot, right? Because the chances of you getting you know, a percentage in each shot that's exactly the same as the percentage of the blend as a whole, I'd say are pretty slim. So from a consistency standpoint, um, if, you, if you want something to taste the exact same way every time, you might be better off using a single origin, just straight Costa Rica or straight Columbia coffee. Um, but I think the trade-off there is you lose some of that, you know, dynamic, uh, cup quality that you get from the blends and what the different origins are really adding to each of those blends. So, um, no, I, I, I don't know that I want to drink a, a shot or a latte that's made with 100%, you know, Sumatran coffee. Do I think Sumatra has a big role in what 
it can add to any blend that you're going to produce. Absolutely. So um, there's there's a balance there. And there's some trade-offs for sure. So we um, know we uh, we have a we're having a conversation with um, uh, a, a business right now that's looking at coffees and doing some blind tasting, and um, they're looking at espresso. And and as part of the conversation, I said, well, we have blends. Are but are you or are you thinking about single origins? Kind of looking at who they are and how they're placed, right? Kind of their their orientation, yeah. who their customers are, and they said, well, both. And they said, great. And what we had to do, though, was obviously we, I have a bunch of materials that can talk about our blends because of the consistency of the blend across time. Um, and uh, I then had to talk with baristas out of the, out of the stores because we in our stores have our dancing goats. And then we usually have a guest espresso as well, that a single origin. Um, and how those two act are very different, right? And so that element um, that we had to call out when I talked to this customer was, listen, I need to check in to talk about the, what they're looking at as far as producing these as single origins, right? Because it, it does take a little bit more management because within a, that one type of copy, you know, there's going to be some notes and some aspects of it that you're trying to maybe mitigate through the espresso method. Right. Whereas a yeah. blend in that sense yeah, is more I, I forgiving, right? It's, uh, yeah, it's it's definitely, you know, more concentrated, right? And by more concentrated I mean when you're when you're when you're pulling shots and you're you're just making small quantities, concentrated yeah. quantities of coffee, these things kind of get magnified. Um it, it, really bad kind of comparison here, you know, we have a fish tank at our house. And it's a small, real small, um, I don't even think it's a five gallon. I think it's like a three and a half gallon tank. And, and I was down at the, the, the fish shop, you know, talking to the guy about, you know, making sure that things stay within the right uh, pH levels. And, and, and he said to me, he's like, you know, I got to be honest with you. It's really, really hard to manage that small of a fish tank because when something goes wrong, it, it goes wrong and, and yeah. there's less of a buffer for e everything else. So, he, he, you know, his recommendation was get a bigger tank if you're having a tough time. And, and I'm not saying, you know, making espresso is like having a tiny fish tank, but making espresso is, is a very small concentrated version of, of coffee, right? So if something tastes wrong, it's going to yeah. taste or, you know, horribly wrong. We can even remove wrong from the conversation and just talk about a specific aspect of like brightness, maybe. Sure. Some folks love yeah. bright coffee, others do not. And so if we're talking about a bright coffee, um, that might really appeal to some folks, it might not uh, to others. And when we put it into the espresso methodology, it's only going to make that brightness, you know, it's going to highlight it um, differently than, than, uh, than, a, than what, what would happen with a blend, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. This is uh, yeah. All right. Well, um, how, how do we want to do this? Uh, you know, I'm gonna taste some coffees here. You you said you're just uh, let's let's talk a little bit about you know why. So Dancing Goats' uh, history here is uh, current owners Larry and Sherry Shalane owned the Dancing Goat Espresso Company in Olympia back in the late '80s. Uh, Bad Door from Bronson was a roasting company that made this custom blend for that cafe. Um, they ended up buying the business and that was kind of the marriage of Bad Door from Bronson and Dancing Goats. I always like to just give a real quick and dirty version of that story. People aren't, aren't aware of, of, of how Dancing Goats and Bad Door from Bronson are related. Um, but that's kind of it in a nutshell. And then now we're at the point where, yes, it's our flagship blend, but it's also our retail brand, right? It's the name of our kind of retail establishments. Um, and, you know, the history, Dancing Goats, um, it ties back to the discovery of coffee in, in, in East Africa, the Arabian Peninsula, current day Ethiopia, with Kaldi, the, the, the goat herd, who, who saw his, his, his goats out there in the field munching on these fruits off of a, a, a shrub and they proceeded to get all excited and get up and dance. And that's the history of the name there. Um, just real quick, wanted to throw that in there in case any of our uh, 
people joining us were not aware mm -hmm. of, of why the name and why the connection with Edward Morazzi. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's always good to remember that. And also to let folks know, you know, who know our coffees and our cafes, why, you know, we have Bad Door from Bronson coffee roasters and the Dancing Goats um, coffee bars or espresso bars in some places. Um, that, that, that that's why it's because that dancing goats really was the first of our retail experiences and so we've just continued that as we yeah. as we built out both Atlanta and Olympia and Tacoma soon we're still moving forward yeah exactly <laughs> so um, yeah so our flagship blend um, it, it, it is our best-selling coffee for sure um, rightfully so you know we always say it's a you know performs great as espresso performs great as drip coffee um sweet chocolatey you know all these things that we we really look for in in cups of coffee there's a little bit of a you know fruit aspect to it as well um but once again what we're really shooting for is just balance and and something that's you're going to want to drink all day and it's going to taste good all the time so um, let's, I'm going to go see if we're still hitting the mark with, with the, uh, coffees that are on the table right now. Yeah, let's How's do it. Uh, and while you're up, uh, doing that, I'm going to, uh, switch us over to, uh, um, while you're doing that, I'm going to be looking at the dancing goats blend online here too. So be making sure folks know, uh, yeah. where right. that is online let's, together. Uh, So as Bob goes over to start tasting these components, I want to remind everyone that um, you can find Dancing Goats along with all of our copies on the website, and I'll make yeah, sure to pop up. Chandler and Ben. What's that? I'm going to have to get a Chandler and Ben to incorporate my fish tank analogy into their training. Oh, I, 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 I see what you're laying down. I think it works. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we work on so many different interesting analogies, right, to, to turn concepts which people do understand if we can just put them into a different frame, right? So, for sure. Um, so, I just want to, again, point, uh, point us to the website here. When you go to Dancing Goats Blend, you can always look at the detailed coffee report, um, which... Uh, Bob writes, he writes these for almost all of our coffees, I think we, and I always make sure to let you know about those. I think they're a really valuable tool. And then also just to remind you that um, when you uh, choose a coffee here and you put it into your, um, into your shopping cart to make sure to use um, the, uh, the coupon that we have for you and which I'm gonna pull up here to remind everybody, it's uh, watch and learn 10. So Watch and Learn 10 is a way for you to get a little bit of a, um, a thank you for watching these videos with us um, and uh, hopefully learning something about coffee, about how we do coffee and why we do coffee the way we do it. So again, Watch and Learn 10 is the coupon for you to use. Um, and I will direct you over to the VIP Club, the Batdorf Boosters VIP Club. If you join there on Facebook, we have additional um, discounts and offers over there as well. So you have to pop over to check those out. All right. So the slurp that you'll hear Bob making is actually, it's not him just having a, an early morning, an early rainy morning, right? Okay. Yeah, no, that's a... Uh aspirating that coffee and the different parts of my palate so i have you know better taste perceptions right mm -hmm. you know we talk about the the tongue map and where we perceive different flavors and such um you know i i don't know if that's been proven or disproven i'll say disproven i think what people do all uh generally accept is you taste different things on different parts of your palate um, you might pick up, you know, bitter on the sides of your tongue. You might pick up sweet on your tongue. That's not necessarily the same for every person, but um, 
you know, point being, if you if you touch all parts of your palate, then you're more likely to have a greater uh, flavor experience. So that's the the, the goal behind the, the slurp. Um, anyway, so uh, the the Costa Rica that's on the table here is a new delivery. It's new crop coffee, and it tastes delicious and wonderful. Um, a lot of just fresh. Uh, tart cherry um just good clean crisp almost a little bit of an apple like acidity um yeah i'm really really pleased with how this coffee's coming in this year i think we you know discussed it a little bit in the past when we were tasting some of those uh you know pre-ships uh central america in general i think from a quality standpoint is having a pretty good year um we're seeing a lot of the effects of leaf rust and from five six years ago with a lot of the renovations that occurred um really kind of come online and come to fruition literally this year and a little bit last year as well so you're getting just uh good young strong trees that are really developing fruit well a lot of a lot of sweetness um good good ripening um so yeah you know i'm pretty excited for these deliveries this year um the Brazil, uh, I mentioned it being uh, a little bit uh, new in the stable in terms of uh, a, a horse that we're going to take out on Derby Day. Um, but we we have kind of a budding relationship with producer in in the, the Campos Altos area. Um, and, you know, this was the first year that we, we, we took a delivery of that coffee. Um, and I'm really happy with, with how things, um, hopefully it will continue here. Obviously it's a strange time. Um, probably something that I'd be doing definitely some investigative work this summer during the main harvest season in Brazil. Um, hopefully I can make that happen this year and go down and visit Maria Jose and his family. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, Sumatra. So this is a coffee that, you know, I haven't really spoken much about, um, that I'd maybe like to take a little bit more time in terms of, you know, t talking about the, that taste experience with this coffee. Um, I mentioned it earlier that over the years, uh, Sumatra's had some challenges, uh, both with quality and quantity. Um, we, we, we're, we've managed to stay in a pretty good position in terms of our supply supply line and coffees that we obtain. Um, really, really high quality Sumatra. Um, definitely a little bit more acidity than, than I think when we think of Sumatra, we're, we're used to thinking or talking about. And I think this is one of the reasons we've had to really tone down the amount of that coffee that we're using in this blend in particular, if not some other blends as well. Um, it's real, you know, people describe it different ways. You know, I'll say herbal. Um, it has kind of sometimes that sort of bell pepper, maybe a little bit of like Anaheim green pepper flavor to it. Um, a little leathery taste in at times, but a nice clean leather, not, you know, like dusty or, or dry leather. Um, and just real soft, you know, real soft kind of velvety mouthfeel to it, especially as it cools off. And I think, you know, historically, that's kind of what you're hoping to add or enhance blend with when you're adding uh, Sumatran coffee, if not some Indonesian coffees in general. They tend to, at least in idea, have that sort of higher body, uh, big, full mouthfeel. And hopefully you can, that those positive attributes are what you're going to add and have show up in your blend. Um, and then lastly, the, uh, the, the, the dark roast component that we find in that coffee, it's uh, a, a French roasted Nicaraguan coffee. And I've talked about this one before. Um, the Finca Los Pasteles, which is uh, a Mirsch, uh, Finca Smirsch uh, coffee that we've been buying for 22 years, I, I believe, a um, long time. And, uh, you know, coffee holds up well to a little bit darker roast. It's really dense, uh, uh, grown outside of Matagalpa, 
um, up in northern Nicaragua, um, a, a, an origin that we're really familiar with. So, um, no, things taste good. Like I said, this is one of those times where we're really paying attention, just knowing that we're going to start, you know, using these new deliveries of the Central American coffee. So, um, you know, as once again, you know, Central America from a coffee buying perspective, it's kind of like our own backyard, right? Um, kind of get down there and, and spend some time, you know, really kind of developing these relationships with producers. So, um, yeah, it's looking pretty good this year, I think, from a quality standpoint. Well, obviously that's good to hear. And I think what's also uh, good to know, just to knowing how long you've been enrolled with Batdorf, um, that, that that has something to do with the ability to maintain relationships even in times like this, right? Um, because this is, you know, this is hard for a lot of folks with limits on travel and travel in question. But I think the time kind of the, the Goodwill bank account that you've been able to build up and that we as a company are able to build up is uh, probably going to serve us well through a time like this, right? Yeah, I, I think so. And, you know, obviously technology being what it is, it's it's relatively easy to stay in touch and have these communications with, with producers at origin. Um, you know, a lot of different things going on right now that need to be taken into consideration you know, our own usage of coffee um, versus what, what we've agreed to purchase sure. and just looking at that kind of crop cycle. And, you know, a lot of people are asking me like, well, you know, what are you going to do about your purchases this year? And it's like, well, you know, we already had planned our purchases for this year. So those are, you know, I'm not going to say they're set in stone and we might make some changes, but you know, what I'm, the conversation I'm having with our producing partners is what are things going to look like next year? You know, you really kind of need to try and, stay ahead of the game on, on this one. So um, we'll see, you know, this is like conversations with, you know, Danielle and Bolivia and how things are going to play out there and what's going on in Peru. And like I said, I mean, further South in South America, you start looking at Brazil and how things are going to play out. There. Um, those are impacts on the industry in general. So, um, but yeah, uh, specifically, invested and happy with the way things are going in terms of our relationships. Um, and if not, then we, we take a hard look at it. We make some changes. So we'll, uh, keep moving forward. Well, Bob, I know, um, it's, it's been great, you know, if using this to talk, uh, you talking more to folks um, through the channels we're using now. I think for sure we've learned that, I mean, this is valuable because on Wednesdays, and I, Krista had mentioned this in her comments, you know, we miss, as a staff, we miss coming together on Wednesdays, right? Um, because that's, you know, what we do every other Wednesday, sometimes every Wednesday. We have cupping, you know, what you're learning. Yeah. Um, and so this is a great way for us to continue that and also to kind of share a little bit of that out, you know, with more folks. So I, I think we're going to find ways to, to keep doing this, even when we are not forced to do it, right, through circumstances, because it's, it's, it's really enjoyable, and I think people are getting a lot of value out of it, right? Yeah, I, I agree. Um, you're a little breaking up a little bit on me there, but I think I got the gist of everything you were saying. But, yeah, no, obviously we take our, our education, our coffee education for our own employees – really seriously we take our coffee education for our customers um specifically wholesale customers obviously they're representing our coffees when they brew them and serve them to their customers but you know it's the the full circle here is every customer anyone that walks into our retail store anyone that's buying a cup of these the coffee from from us, um, whether it's through a wholesale partner directly in our cafes or directly online through our website. Yeah. We want people to have those connections and, and, and having done this for employees, like you said, every other Wednesday. And I think, yeah, there's an expectation expectation and people liked showing up. And honestly, you know, I think something else that you and Krista and a lot of other employees will, will probably recognize. You know, we can we can continue to drink coffees and, and learn about the coffees we're sharing. But the important thing was it also provided us with a forum to have 
you know, 20 to 25 of us in the lab talking about everything else, right? Sure. Maybe not talking about the coffee that we're tasting, but talking about, you know, the procession parade that's coming up in retail this coming weekend right. or, or any other promotions that we might be doing. So um, that, that's really, for me, the part that I miss the most. Um, and hopefully we'll all be back down there again, doing it soon. And uh, yeah, I, I love the, that's really, you know, what keeps the gears turning for the business. So yeah, hopefully the gears will keep turning. Yeah, I, I know that this has been a part of doing that, you know, making sure we're trying to connect as much as possible across the different teams. Um, that's absolutely been valuable for me. So I hope it's valuable for, I know we have staff watching and uh, as well as our, you know, fans on Facebook and uh, customers. So um, thank you for your time. I really appreciate how, uh, how dedicated you have been. I look forward to our next uh, conversation um, abroad. Those have been really fun. Uh, so uh, just let me know what you're thinking about and we'll get set it up on this end and we'll make sure people know about it as it, as it comes up. Okay. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll let you know here shortly who to expect come zooming in internationally next. <laughs> Let's see if we can break the bandwidth. Um, Bob, thanks so much. Um, I'm going to say goodbye to you. I'm going to have a few more. I have a few words right. for the folks online here after Bob signs off. But you have a great day. Uh, love to your family and your dogs and uh, go out and mow the lawn. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Appreciate it. You bet. Bye bye. Okay, folks, um, so that was awesome. Uh, it's so great to have um, access to uh, that level of, of breakdown, to break down um, a copy like that and to talk about it. it is a, it's a fascinating world, right, to, um, to consider all the variables that is being, are being put into making a blend of coffee. Um, and it's going on every day. And it's still going on every day, right? This is the place where I, I do the appeal and uh, I thank you for your time. And I also ask that um, if you uh, have not tried Dancing Goats to please uh, uh, avail yourself of our, of our coupon here for 10% off of that purchase. I have to do that. I have to make sure you know about it. There it is. Watch and Learn 10. You put that into the coupon code area um, when you make the purchase. And uh, that gets you um, a discount and helps you enjoy the coffees. Maybe you want to try some of the other coffees you heard Bob talking about. The Sumatra I put in the links there as well, right? So maybe you want to, maybe you haven't tried um, a Sumatra. Maybe you haven't, you haven't tried our Sumatra. I do recommend that um, you, you, give it a, you give it a try. I'll be honest. I was not a fan of Sumatran coffees before I started working for Batdorf six years ago. I have since become one. And I think it's because of the, um, the clarity of approach that, that Bob takes to sourcing and that the roasting team takes in, um, in applying what, what the right consistent um, roast profile to the coffees we have in order to work with them as organic things. I think that's really important. Um, that's what's helped me to become a, a Sumatra lover. Um, so what's coming up today, three o'clock Pacific time, right here on the Pacific coast, Pacific time zone, um, six o'clock over, uh, East coast time. Uh, we're going to have, uh, Brandon doing something very special. We try to do something a little bit special on these Fridays, right? Um, today it's going to be affogatos. What's an affogato you ask? Oh, glad you asked. It is, uh, a little bit of ice cream with espresso, often gelato, technically maybe, but ice cream um, with espresso uh, poured over it. It's going to be uh, delicious. So uh, tune in for that. Become inspired. Um, and then uh, we can also find ways to um, experiment with drinks. If you have ideas, send them in via the comments here or uh, today when Brendan does his show. Um, let him know, let Brandon know if you have ideas for different types of drinks you're making at home or that you want to see demoed or maybe just throw out some concepts, right? Um, we love that kind of stuff, especially for Fridays as we look forward to the weekend to do something a little bit special. So um, tune in for that. And then I wanted to remind everyone that um, next, to, 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 to next Saturday, we're going to be having um, that brew together event and you can get that by going over to our uh, 
Facebook page, which is the Batdorf Booster VIP page. You can check that out there. And when you go there, you'll see that we also have some special discounts um, that are available just to members of the, the VIP page. So I would recommend if, if you like following these, we repost all these videos occur over there as well. So you can watch from that platform also. Um, thank you so much for your time today. I know that uh, we're all getting ready for a, a long weekend, I guess. Uh, are we? I don't know. <laughs> it's supposed to be a long weekend. Um, so usually folks would be traveling, right? And maybe going camping. Uh, so uh, we're turning our deck into a campground um, for this weekend. We're going to be doing our own um, uh, three-day weekend camping, but we will have a show on Monday. Don't worry about that. Even though it's a holiday, um, we'll figure out something fun to do. Maybe it will involve s'mores and coffee. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, oh, and, and Brendan uh, reminds me. Um, Brendan reminds me to say that there is a contest associated with the the Brewing Together event. Right? Um, you get some coffee from us. We brew it together at the live event. And then there will be uh, a prize of six months worth of coffee, a six month subscription as it were. So um, be sure to uh, go check that out. Um, have a great weekend. Take care everybody and uh, look forward to seeing you here um, and as we move into the next month. Here comes June. <laughs>